Hi there, it's Matt Allington here, and today I'm going to talk about the May 2022 Power BI desktop release. It's just dropped, and there's a feature in there that I think is really powerful, and I want to give you a couple of demonstrations. So the new feature is called Field Parameters, and there are three use cases that I want to demonstrate for you today in this video. That's chart items, chart access, and also table contents. So this new feature as of May 2022 is a preview feature. So like any preview feature, you would come up to the file options and settings and options. And within here, there's the preview features. And this is the item, the field parameters. As always, there's some more information. You can click on the hyperlink to go ahead and get more information about that. So I've turned this on. After you turn it on, you need to restart Power BI Desktop. Now, after you've turned it on, there will be a new feature that appears up here. Now, this new parameter button has been here for oh, probably five years, at a guess. And previously, it only had one option, which was, it was previously called a what if parameter. They've renamed that, so it's no longer what if parameter, it's now called numeric range. And we have this new one called fields. Now, I don't particularly like the word fields. Um, you'll notice that fields does exist inside Power BI Desktop. It's over here. This is called the, the Fields pane. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm not a big fan, but Fields basically is an aggregation of columns and measures. So both columns and measures together are called Fields. I don't particularly like it, but anyway, that's, that's what they've called it. Okay, so let me go through and show you a couple of demos. So the first demo I'm going to show you is to use this new feature to create some chart items. So I'll jump over here to a new page. I've got a line chart here. And if I click on my line chart, I'm showing year and month on the axis, and I'm showing total sales here as the line itself. You'll also probably have noticed that there has been a naming change here. So previously, this would say values. More recently, Microsoft has changed that to say Y axis. So indicating that whatever you place here appears on the Y axis. Um, it'll take a little bit of getting used to, but um, I think hopefully it's a little bit easier for people starting out inside Power BI. Now, you previously may have seen some demos from me where I created a switch measure. With that switch measure, I could click on a different item in a slicer and this chart would update instead of displaying sales, might display margin, for example. And that's one of the things that you can do with this new parameter button. So I'm going to click new parameter fields. And this parameter is going to be, I'll call it my chart items, call it whatever you want. And I can actually bring any measure across in this particular use case. So I'm going to bring total sales, I'll bring total margin, and I'll bring margin percent across. So maybe just those three things. I'll leave the add slicer to this page and click create. And when I do that, I get a slicer over here and notice that this slicer is joined to a table. So what happened when I click on that new parameter is a new table was generated. So if I come over here, here's the chart items. And then if I come over here, what I'll need to do is go to the chart, remove my total sales from the chart. And instead, I'll bring this chart items and I'll put that on the Y axis. At this stage, I don't have anything selected in my slicer, so I see all three items. But now I can use this slicer to toggle between the different items. Notice that the percentage formatting does come through, so that's nice. So this has been possible in the past, but in order to do it, you had to write a switch measure, you had to create a numeric parameter table, or indeed a, a, a manual parameter table that had these descriptions. So this is just fast track the process of producing this type of parameter. Okay, so the second use case I want to show you is to be able to change the axis of a chart. So this is uh, completely new. So at the moment, my chart is showing calendar year, but I'm going to set up a parameter where I can change what appears on the axis of my chart. So same as before, I'll come up to the modeling tab, I'll do a new parameter and I'll go fields. And then this time I'll call it my chart axis. Of course, you can call it whatever you want. You could give it a, 
a more generic name if you wanted to use it in other areas. And this time I'm only going to select columns from my model. So I want to keep calendar year as an option. Um, I might also bring customer occupation and I might go to the products. I'll bring say color and subcategory. Now, if you don't like any of these terms, you can double click here. I can just call it year. I think we'll know it's calendar year and I might call this customer occupation. So you can make changes directly in here and then I click create. And same as before, I left the add slicer option selected and same again as before, I get a table that's generated. So another table over here. It's disconnected table, so it's only being used to accept user feedback through this slicer. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove my X axis, which is currently hard coded as the calendar year. And I'm going to bring my chart axis into the X axis. And then when I select one of these values, it will actually update my chart to display the chart based on the item that I've selected. This once again could be done in other ways using bookmarks and various other techniques, but it's now so much easier just to allow this type of user interaction. Okay, so the third option I want to show you is where I can update a table of values allowing the user to select items from a list. So here I have a list of my top 15 customers and I'm currently showing sales and margin percentage along with their name. But what I can do now with this new what if parameter is I can add a new parameter and add any item, be it a column or a measure, to the list that the end user might want to see in a report. So I'm going to call this customer details. And in this I will add, I'll leave the customer key and name in here, but I might add a little bit of metadata about the customer. So maybe gender and I'll add occupation to name two. And then I'll go to the sales table and I'll add some measures. So margin percent and total sales are already there, but I might add total cost and total margin. Of course, you can add as many items as you like to this list. So go ahead and create that and I'll leave the create slicer option on. I now once again get a brand new table which is under the hood. This is not connected to anything else and that table connects to this slicer. And then what I need to do is I remove these items here that I don't need and instead I'll bring the customer details onto the table. Now at this point in time, because there's nothing selected in the slicer, they will all appear here. But now what I can do is I can multi-select. Indeed, I can come up here and I can change the slicer settings to selection uh, multi-select without. And now I can say I want to see occupation, uh, total sales and margin percent. And then so basically the end user can put whatever they want to see inside this table. And then indeed, if you wanted to, you could allow them to come up and export that data for other purposes. Not that I'm necessarily condoning that, but I'm just trying to say to you that you can give your end users a lot of flexibility on how to build these reports. Now, once again, this has been possible for some time. You could allow users to bring items in if, as long as they had edit mode. But what this allows end users who only have read only mode is it allows them to build a, a table that might meet their, their requirements. Okay, so as mentioned at the front, I do have a bonus fourth use case that I want to show you here. Um, Artium gave me this idea. Thanks a lot, Artium. So the fourth use case is when you're in a matrix or in any other drillable visual for that matter, I could come in here and say bring customer occupation into this, um, into this matrix and I'll bring total sales in. And you're probably aware that you can add hierarchies into here. So if I come to customers, what I could do is I could create a hierarchy here. So I want a, uh, a new hierarchy and I've got occupation currently in my hierarchy, but I can add items to the hierarchy. So I could add uh, gender, so add to the hierarchy and I could come up and find marital status and I could add that to the hierarchy. So this has been possible for forever. And so if I delete that and I bring the hierarchy into my matrix, 
I can expand these items and drill down through the hierarchy. So this has been possible literally forever. Um, the second thing that I've always been able to do is I could bring in a single column from the customer table and then bring in another single column from a different table products and a single column from a different table like this. And now what I can do is I can drill down through different tables. I, I call this an ad hoc hierarchy. I call the, the other one um, a natural hierarchy. The main difference is these ad hoc hierarchies come from different tables and you have to build them on the fly. You haven't been able to do this um, and store it as part of your model. But as Artyom pointed out to me, I am actually now able to do this. So what I can do is I can take one of these, um, these parameters, these field parameters. In this case, I'm going to take the chart axis table that I created before, and I'm going to put that on rows. And I can now use this as a permanent hierarchy that I can store in my model. And now when I drill down on this, I can get that same behavior as I was getting from my ad hoc hierarchy with multiple of these columns coming from different tables, be it the customer table or the calendar table or the products table. So that's the fourth bonus use case using these field parameters.